Hello Legion, this is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Stellaris in our Song of the Stars series. It's been a while since we played Stellaris at all. We um it's been well, it's been a month. It's not like it's been six months. Sometimes a YouTuber says, It's been a while since I've played this. In, in my case, it's been a month. Um, but we had Against All Odds season three playing for a bit there, and because of the way that ended, we had Survival School kick in right after that. So we've had the Long Dark dominating the 6 p.m. slot, which tends to happen to my channel, and I'm not entirely thrilled about it. As much as I love the Long Dark and I love Hinterland, I do like some variety. But one of the reasons I wanted to play Stellaris and return to Song of the Stars today is not only because the series is an interesting one and it's unfinished, but also um, Utopia, the expansion, and the accompanying Banks patch, with which both look massive and amazing and game-altering are coming in about a month so i would like the channel to be positioned well to cover that stuff so you're probably going to see some more stellaris content um going forward in addition to some more variety hopefully in the 6 p.m slot uh in june of course we will of course do against all odds season four but that's a question for three months from now <laughs> uh, for now we're going to focus on covering more stellaris and i'm pretty excited about it so let me give you a quick primer on the series off the top of my head for those of you who may not know what song of the stars is about and what stellaris is about stellaris is a space 4x slash grand strategy grand strategy title i say 4x slash grand strategy because it kind of starts as a 4x where you are going out and you're exploring you're exploiting you're exterminating you know you're doing all of the things you're expanding sorry that's the fourth x um but you are doing all the things that, that are associated with 4x games but then once you have expanded for a while you've been playing for several uh years and in, in game years uh you actually end up more in a paradox style grand strategy title where you're dealing with complex political situations between factions and your own empire factions of other empires outright wars between empires things like that so th there's kind of a nice blend to it and it is of course space based with this particular series what i tried to do is i created a custom race called the voices uh, and that's what they look like right now right now our quora which is uh named for a female leader is named golf the first and Golf leads the voices. The voices are a precursor race. And you can't, there's not a way in Stellaris to literally say, I want this race to be a precursor. What I did was I set up the game to have as few AI starting out as possible. Now, as you can see, that doesn't mean there's no AI in the game. There's plenty of other races. But what it does mean is that you are the only one who is spacefaring at the beginning. And all the other races have to kind of catch up to you. Um, and so what I've tried to do is establish this hegemony, basically. Um, now, we have a lot to do with the voices because since I played this last, when I started out the series, I'm going to speak more now to people who have been following Song of the Stars since the beginning and maybe watched the first episode. One thing that I said was, well, you know, I'm going to play Stellaris on the channel. I'm going to play more of it. But for now, you should know I am not that experienced with the later part of the game. That is no longer true. I have beaten the game of Stellaris, just one, uh, but still, it's happened now. I, I have also played a great deal more in between this episode and the last one that you watched. So um, it's it's been a bit since I played Having said that, it's been a bit since I played it, but um, in between this episode, again, and the last one, um, I, I've played a good bit. So hopefully there will be some differences in how quickly I expand in some directions. For instance, there are a number of colonies that are just, they're just ready <laughs> out here on the frontier, and I need to stop waiting. I need to send colony ships out and expand rapidly because we're probably going to go for a domination victory here. And the other thing I want to do is I want to get to Earth. This is the Sol system. We, we received, we found the Voyager probe years and years and years ago. And we have yet to be able to get to Earth. And it seems like they might actually get conquered by the Lavis Autocracy, which kind of sucks. But hey, you've got a pumpkin for a head, buddy. Has anyone told you? Just, okay, well, if no one else. Anyway, um... <laughs> So we have some interesting things to do. We, we are going to try and go for the domination victory in this leg of the series, but also I want to try and go for Saul. And then uh, also we are still doing the horizon signal quest chain. However horribly that ends, I'm not sure. Um, let's see, this is Sec 20. We just finished our first war with the Copenjaxi hegemony and we captured this part of their territory from them. So let's go ahead and add that star to it. It looks like that one is still in their territory a little bit. So having said all that, let's go ahead and close up some of these things. Uh, we'll return to faction in just a bit. We've got a ton of observation posts set up. I've got a science ship that's currently cruising through and set to investigate all of this debris from the war. And then 
beyond that, hang on, let's stop managing the sector there. None of my other science ships have orders, which is interesting. So why not go ahead and have them auto explore again, just wherever they can go. I don't remember what my reasoning was for not giving them any orders. Okay, you, oh, you don't have a scientist. Lumvio needs a scientist. What do we have? Anomaly fail risk minus 10%. Sure. Exfolio Capritech. I'm pretty sure we are, we've already had a scientist in the past called Exfolio Capritech, but we'll go with him. All right, so let's go ahead and put you on automatic exploration and one more science ship. The Lumreva. The Lumreva is one of our original science ships. It's been around for a couple of hundred years now at this point. It's a very old ship, uh, but it's done a lot of good work for us. So yeah, having just finished this war, our first priority is to make sure that our new territory is in good shape. So it looks like all of the scannable, um, well, actually, no, I don't know very much about whether or not every single uh, resource is being mined. That's the word I was looking for because um, I haven't unpaused the game yet. But the reason I don't know is that these systems haven't been scanned yet. So maybe... Okay, some of the science ships are coming down to explore it, so that's good by me. And then this is the one that's exploring the debris. So let's unpause and go to fast speed. Meanwhile, let's have a look at our armies. So these are our two main fleets, which are still recovering. You can see that they've just been in a battle. They haven't even healed up yet. So we just finished this war. Now, do I need to embark anyone from here? This is everyone. All right, so this is our transport fleet in Gauze. All these planets are freshly ours. So we're going to have some issues with factions popping up. As a matter of fact, let me keep this open. Let's see, Sec... Which sector is this? This is Sec Quinny. All right, so there's already a Nal Quinny nationalist block. Yeah, it's these guys. So they already want that. I'm going to go ahead and suppress them right away because these guys are citizens of the empire that we just conquered and they're going to be a problem for a while i cannot wait for the new faction management and many other features that are being added in uh in banks it's looking cool all right let's unpause and keep going so we've got a lot going on uh yes we won that war defensive pact invitation from whom from the lavis autocracy i don't know if i want that i'm gonna say uh, i'm gonna decline that what are we working on researching at the moment? We're researching better physics labs, better army health. All right, so the fact that we have gotten to these technologies where you see this kind of cycle outline, those are the end game technologies. Basically, when you have researched all of the main chain of technologies, you'll start to see these, which just give you perpetual bonuses on basic things like production, army health, weapon damage, etc. Uh, just making your empire perpetually better because you've already done all of the main things. I would imagine as the game's expanded and um, the tech tree is added to on both ends, in the front end, middle end, well, everywhere. It's just expanded, deepened. As as the game changes, there will be more and more and you'll see less and less focus on those. But for now, that's what those mean. That is one of the things I've picked up having played the game uh, offline a good bit. All right, so... You guys need to upgrade, and so do you, as a matter of fact. Nice. Okay, so the Takashi hierarchy has made peace with the nation of Nimolin. Where are you guys again? Okay, so these guys apparently were at war. Can't possibly imagine why, but they've made peace. Interesting. Verm Regan. There has been a sweeping change in the ways of the primitive Avarians since we began aggressively observing members of their species all over Verm Regan. Oh yeah, that happened. Their hatred of our abduction shuttles has made them extremely mistrustful of anything they consider foreign, while at the same time strengthening the bonds they feel toward their own culture and species. So that's going to make them harder to integrate. And where are you exactly? You're in the Asmore system? So what that means is that these guys here, what's, this is a Steam Age civilization. These guys are now fanatic xenophobes. <laughs> they are now extremely intolerant. Yeah, they're they're fanatic. Every single population on the planet is fanatic xenophobe. That's hilarious. Okay, so since we're done with the war, another thing we need to do, over here we have all of these colonies that are just ripe for the taking. This is a tundra world, so... Ooh, here we have a continental world here in Vestalis. Why don't I go ahead and go for that first? 
Oh, we still don't have quite enough to colonize it, but we will soon. It's actually going to take a little bit of effort, because we need a lot of influence, and we don't have a lot of it at the moment. So it's going to take some time to build up, but we're still going to colonize pretty rapidly. Let's go to maximum speed here. All right, and we're going to have Nalzaroth citizens, the original voices. So this is Nal Vestalis. Agree. All right, so we're definitely analyzing that debris as much as possible. And I have exploited currently all of my current core sectors. I have five possible core sectors. System survey complete. Ships hmm. I'm noticing some weird uh, FPS issues. It might just be end game stuff or the fact that we're playing on fastest. Hang on. Yeah, that's what it is. It's the fast speed. Okay, that explains it. Threw me off for a second. I was curious what that was. All right, so there are definitely more resources for us to exploit in this area. So let me go ahead and send some ships down. Okay, it looks like I'm going to need to build... Yep, we need to continue our deal for the spice. Construction complete. It looks like system this system complete. here is in the borders of the Copenjaxi, which is not good. The entire purpose of taking this war was to take control of this junction point, but it still seems like it's right on the border. And if they close their borders to us, that could be a real problem. We might need to take their capital system in the next war, which we can't, we can't war with them until when? 2373, almost 10 years from now. I'm not a fan of the truce periods, but there might be ways to alter that in the future. Spiron Foundation has stopped guaranteeing the independence of the Zokplot allied worlds. Great. All right, still analyzing debris. There's some debris in rule as well that we need to investigate. Ships upgraded. Debris analyzed. Can I potentially get there? I think I can. Their borders are open to us right now, after the war, which I find very interesting. So science ships. Oh, interesting. The last of our Equinian test subjects on Starnet has succumbed to the effects of their defective brain implants. Many went completely berserk, shrieking random code segments from the voices programming language used in their implants while savagely attacking anyone or anything in their immediate vicinity. So that sucks. How could this have happened? This is a steam age civilization. So are they dead? I guess I don't remember what was going on with that. That happened, of course, before we went to break with the series. So Whatever it is, that sounded like it sucked. We are aggressively observing them now. System survey complete. System survey complete. Okay, so we are definitely... Do I have a colony ship on its way yet? Yes. Colony ship is on its way to Vestalis. And then those... These planets will be immediately easier to colonize. We have some tomb worlds that are colonizable. Oh, wait. Duranma 3 has been colonized into a tropical world. Hey, Duranma is in my core. Yes, perfect. So this is now a, a tropical world. I could terraform this to a Gaia world, couldn't I? Oh, I don't have Gaia creation yet. Damn. But we, we are definitely going to colonize that. Absolutely. It's kind of a crappy planet, but we're going to do it anyway. Alright, so this is Daran. Oh, man. I don't remember what we're just going to call it Darren for now, <laughs> until I remember what my naming schema was. There was a there was a system somewhere down here where I have three planets. Hang on, if I could find it, this is me on a quest. has to be a, a system with three different colonies. Because that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for what my naming system was. I, I made it up on the spot, but it's been such a rare thing that we have three planets in one system that I immediately forgot it. <laughs> 
where was it in Osmodim? No. Is there a planet list maybe that I could look at? Planets and sectors? See, these are just my home sectors. I can't actually see the content of these sectors. Oh yes, I can. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I didn't know you could do that. That's good to know. So you can you can click on that and it actually opens up. All right. So not. Oh, we still have some colonies here that have the uh, apostrophes. Can I rename them? Yes, I can. That's excellent. Sorry, I'm dying. <laughs> We're in episode 41 of this series. This is what's going to determine, determine whether or not you watch the rest and I'm doing all these micromanagement stuff. This is late game Stellaris. This is this is what you do. Um, yeah, I definitely want to fix that. That's just a weird little quirk I started adding by accident and I'm nothing... I, I, it's, it's very, very important to me that there be consistency. And some people were like, no, I like the apostrophe. But no, the apostrophe must go. All right, so now that we know where that is, hang on, let's keep looking. No, I don't want to rename it. I just want to close that. Bryn Met, Mir Met, Nal Brynis, Mir Nal Synth, right? Sec Karen, Kanur, Hinumium, Nal Vitrius, Nal Karen. I'll fix those later. It takes too much time. <laughs> Nal Fan. We're almost there. We're going to find it this way. This is easy. This is a pretty big sector. Is this Sexaya? Yeah. Lavas Kra. That's what it was. Lavas Kra. So it's K-R-A. All right. So, and what was... Well, wait, crap. What was the planet we just renamed? Oh, yeah. So it would be Daras Kra. Or Daran Kra. Done. All right, so that colony ship is on its way. <laughs> That's fantastic, actually, now that we have access to that. It also looks like Ofang is colonizable, but until we have more room for cores, for core systems, um, we're not going to be able to expand just yet. We have two system planets, two systems that could, that could be expanded into in our core territory, which is right here. But um, for now, we're just waiting for our colony ship, which is right there. The Viva, what's that? Viva Lalon? Gonna colonize there and we'll start a new sector. We've already built everything we can there. Let's go down here and make sure that we've system survey complete. No no, that's not what I wanted to do. There we go. System survey complete. Debris analyzed. Alright, so most of the debris's been analyzed already, which is great. Complete. Oh crap. Sorry. I swear I really try to have my phone Research complete. on uh, like silent before I record and then it just it never fails like for some stupid reason I turn it off silent and forget that I did it anyway um ooh new resource what do you have FTL speed and sensor range plus a hundred percent if we get this row strategic resource oh that's fantastic so this is based this is the um see this is zero that's what it is this is basically the um uh, this is their nod to element zero I think in Mass Effect because element zero is what enables psionic uh, abilities in in Mass Effect so zero zero yeah so let's go for that it's gonna take 92 months now we have access to better physics lab let's go ahead and upgrade all those shall we god I love this music so much All right, so it looks like our core, our leader just died. Let's have a look at the new leader. This is Quorum Ruber, so we're back to a male leader. And we have um, lower ship upkeep and army upkeep, which isn't bad, and lower destroyer build costs. Those are not great bonuses, though, at this point. Lower ship upkeep is okay. I mean, that's 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 pretty good. It'll help us keep our credit deficit. Um, well, it'll help us not have credit deficit. Hantok civilization encountered. Where are you? Situation. All right, hold on. System Too much happening at once. All right, so we have a construction ship that's idle. Come here, build an observation post right away. This is a Bronze Age primitive civilization we've just encountered on Jurg Pulig. And then what else? That's right, there was a um, new alien race. Where exactly? Here. What new alien race is there here? 
Ooh. As science officer Milas, Milas Kajatek reports her findings about the immense ring world in the Ifriri system, she can barely contain her awe. The immensity of the rings are beyond our comprehension. The time required to construct even one of the sections are far beyond us. The scans reveal a rare new resource we've never encountered before, a living metal which is abundant on the rings. This material might be one of the reasons the rings creators cons could construct it in the first place. Research this technology. Researching this technology might bring us closer to their knowledge. Tech research option gained living metal. As science officer Sturpis Caprina reports her findings about the immense ring. Okay, this is the same thing. So, all right, now we get a progress bonus. Same update, but the benefit is... Okay, they were both exploring at the same time. And there's a curator enclave here, so that's what it is. And I think we already have contact with a curator enclave, but let's... Let's be sure. No, this is our first one. Holy crap. Okay, well... Wait, really? That's it? Maybe I'm thinking of my other game. That's good, though. Well met. Now let's talk to you. We definitely can recruit one of their scientists, but first we need to deal with them a good bit. Can you aid us in our research? We would like to purchase this service. For 5,000 credits, we get better output and it improves their opinion of us. Now, could we recruit one of your scientists? Okay, we still need more energy credits, but we're able to do it now, which is fantastic. So we can use one of their scientists to get even better with our research than what we just got. The alien civilization on Starnet has encountered has entered a new era of history, having developed a fully industrialized society. The dramatic effects of this revolution are felt across the planet. So we have an industrial revolution on our hands in one of our territories, actually pretty close to this new area we're colonizing. All right, so let me have a look. All right, this is a desert world. This is an alpine world. Let's colonize this with... We can colonize with voices. You know what? Yeah, let's do that. This is Vestal Met. That got changed somehow. Construction complete. Lots of construction fin uh, finishing up right now. It's all the, uh, all those upgrades we did just now. All right, now this is counting as a core colony, so we need to establish our new sector. What was the hotkey for sector management? F5? Yep. Create new sector. Here. All right, I think what I want to do is I'm gonna go ahead and expand this sector all the way. This is actually gonna be gonna be a giant new sector. Encompassing all of this. Okay. And that solves that problem. Now I just need to rename it, right? No, I don't. I want to close that. Thank you. All right. Sec Vestal. Perfect. Let's unpause. It looks like we just finished Advanced Railguns. Very nice. So. Yeah, I need to go for Living Metal. Absolutely. I mean, there's just no question that that's, that's the next thing we should go for. It's going to take a while to do, but if we can get access to that new researcher, that might be better. Sector's missing resources. Oh, let's fix that, shall we? We actually don't have a ton of energy to be giving away to new sectors at the moment, but this will help the new sector get started. Meanwhile, I was just looking at this world as one to colonize, which I think I already gave the order, right? Pretty sure I did. Is one of the homeworlds building a colony ship? Yes, it is. So I did give the order. All right, now this one as well, I should colonize with. Yeah, I'm going to keep using voices population. As much as it lowers their potential happiness, I would rather 
my home species, now that they have such good habitability, be able to explore these planets. All right, gamma laser. Select it. We're already researching that. Oh, we just finished that because we got it from debris. So we got the gamma laser automatically. Not bad. Can we upgrade? Do it. All right, well, we're 25 minutes into this episode. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut this one here. And then the next one, uh, we are going to expand rapidly down this arm of the galaxy as much as we can manage with our current. Um, okay, so it looks like Jurg Polig has entered an Iron Age. Um, which is pretty cool. Some of their... Wait, this is the brand new... Oh, this is the one we just found, and they just transitioned into an Iron Age. Not bad at all. So much going on now that we control so much of the galaxy. It's awesome. Uh, but we're going to head back down... Ooh. Saul is now definitely under the purview of the Lavas Autocracy. That doesn't bode well. I don't know if there's going to be any point to getting there now. We're still going to try, but... Man, I've been excited about that for this whole series. But anyway, we'll work on that and many other things in the next episode. I'm glad Song of the Stars is back, and we can look forward to a lot more Stellaris content going forward, as well as updated Stellaris content once that patch comes out, which I'm so amazingly excited about. It's going to be it's going to be great, and I'm going to do a few videos uh, in the near future talking more about that. If you guys haven't heard, uh, I'm going to do what I can to pull together some of the stuff I know and, uh, and share it with you. So anyway, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New science fiction, survival, and or simulation titles air daily at noon 6 p.m. Or I'm sorry, not at noon 6 p.m. What the hell is noon 6 p.m.? At 6 p.m. Eastern Time on my channel. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.